It looks like the big threat to Westeros in Game of Thrones Season 7 are the Others, or White Walkers, with their army of the dead, marching on the wall to bring a night that never ends. These guys are a problem, because the Walkers are not only super strong, super angry ice demons, but their swords can shatter steel. They seem immune to normal weapons. There are just two known ways to kill a walker. One is with a blade of dragon glass, go watch that video, and the other way is with a blade of Valyrian steel. We see this in season 5 and it's also hinted in the books. Valyrian steel is a special kind of metal, used to make swords that are sharper, stronger and lighter than blades of regular steel. The steel was made in Valyria hundreds of years ago, but when Valyria was destroyed in a mysterious doom, the secret of making Valyrian steel was lost. So the Valyrian blades that remain are really valuable. There are a couple of hundred of them in Westeros, but only about twenty are mentioned in the books. Most are the treasured heirlooms of noble houses, handed from generation to generation through the centuries. Lots of these swords have great backstories and histories, and some of them may play a role in the war with the walkers to come. So let's have a look at the Valyrian Blades of Game of Thrones. Probably the most obvious Valyrian sword is Longclaw, the sword used by Jon Snow. Longclaw is a bastard sword, which means it's a bit longer than a normal longsword. It's also pretty fitting given that Jon is a bastard, or he's believed to be a bastard, but that's another story. Longclaw is given to Jon by Jor Mormont, whose family held the sword for hundreds of years. Jor originally gave Longclaw to his son Jorah, but Jorah dishonoured the family by selling slaves and fleeing Westeros. He leaves the sword behind though, so Jor gives it to Jon. It would be interesting to see Jorah's reaction, if he ever sees Jon with his family's sword. But with its bastard blade and white wolf pommel, Longclaw is very symbolic of Jon's identity. It'll no doubt play a big role in Jon's fight against the White Walkers, and the sword might even tie into the prophecies about a hero called Azor Ahai who's expected to lead the fight against the Walkers with a flaming sword called Lightbringer. That's what Stannis and Melisandre try to emulate. There are theories suggesting that Jon's sword Longclaw might somehow become the true Lightbringer, to be the fire and the light needed to face the darkness and cold. Another sword that appears in the show is Heartsbane, the Valyrian steel greatsword of House Tarly. Randall Tarly makes a big deal of how he doesn't want his fat, cowardly son Sam to inherit the fabled blade Heartsbane, which is part of the reason why Randall forces Sam to join the Night's Watch. Heartsbane has a long history. A few hundred years ago, an outlaw from Dawn called the Vulture King was stopped when men led by a savage Sam Tarly hunted him down, using Heartsbane to slay dozens of Dornishmen. There's a pretty good chance our Sam was named after this historical savage Sam. Now, in the books, Heartsbane is held by Randall Tarly, who's known as one of the great soldiers of Westeros. But in the show, Sam visits home and takes Heartsbane from Randall, bringing it with him to the Citadel, the sort of Hogwartsy university of the Maesters, which could play out in some interesting ways. Maybe Sam and the Maesters could study Heartsbane, try to unlock the secrets of Valyrian steel, or maybe find more Valyrian blades. But whatever happens at the Citadel, Randall will want his sword back. Another important sword is Ice, the Valyrian steel greatsword of House Stark. Ice is really big, apparently too big to use in battle, it's more of a ceremonial sword. Ned Stark uses it to execute Garrod at the start of Book 1, and near the end of Book 1, Ilan Payne uses it to execute Ned. So the Lannisters end up with ice, and Tywin Lannister decides to melt ice down and reforge it into two smaller swords. Because while no one knows how to make new Valyrian steel, some skilled smiths can reforge it into new forms. In this case, Tywin hires the armorer Tobo Mott, who happens to be the teacher of Gendry. So some people speculate that Gendry knows a thing or two about Valyrian steel. But yeah, ice is melted down and forged into two smaller swords. Tywin gives one to his son Jaime, and the other to his grandson Joffrey. Joffrey names his sword Widow's Whale, because he's a nasty little shit, while Jaime does something more meaningful. Jamie names his sword Oathkeeper, and gives it to Brienne. 
Because remember, Jamie swears an oath to Catelyn Stark that in return for being set free, Jamie would return to her Sansa and Arya. So Jamie gives Brienne Oathkeeper to uphold this oath on his behalf, to defend Ned Stark's daughter with Ned Stark's own steel. The sword also represents the respect Jamie has for Brienne. He used to have nothing but contempt for her, but now he gives her a sword fit for a hero. Joffrey, meanwhile, uses his Valyrian sword to slay a book, and then a pie, and then he dies. The sword then presumably goes to Joff's brother Tommen, though in the show, Tommen's dead too, so it's not clear who'll use Widow's Whale next. Widow's Whale is now the only known Valyrian sword in the city of King's Landing, so it surely will come in handy sometime. So those are the major Valyrian swords that appear in the story, but there are also some interesting historical ones. Perhaps the most famous Valyrian blade is Blackfire. Blackfire was the sword of King Aegon Targaryen, the Conqueror who first took over Westeros. Aegon was a great warrior, and used Blackfire in the battles that founded the Targaryen dynasty. Each king after Aegon bore his sword, so Blackfire became an important symbol of Targaryen political legitimacy. If you had the sword, you were seen as the rightful king. That's why it was so shocking when King Aegon IV, one of the worst Targaryen kings, gave Blackfire to one of his bastard sons, Daemon. Daemon took Blackfire as his house name, and later claimed to be the rightful king, beginning a war for succession called the First Blackfire Rebellion. The great battle of this rebellion was at the Redgrass Field, where Daemon used Blackfire in a duel against Gwain Corbray, who had his own famous Valyrian blade called Lady Forlorn. It's said they fought for near an hour, and each time Blackfire and Lady Forlorn clashed, you could hear the sound from leagues away, half a song and half a scream. Eventually, Daemon won the duel, but then he was killed by arrows from his half-brother, Bloodraven, who, by the way, is the same guy who later becomes a tree god and teaches Bran how to magic. More on him later. So Daemon died on the red grass field, but his Blackfire ancestors continued to rebel against the Targaryens for years, and all of this began partly because Aegon IV gave the Conqueror's sword to his bastard son. The sword represents being the rightful king, but for the last hundred years or so, no one seems to know where the sword is, which could have implications for the schemes of Varys and Illyrio. In the books, Varys and Illyrio have this crazy complex conspiracy to put a kid called Young Griff, who they say is Aegon VI, on the Iron Throne. Go watch that video. But basically, there's evidence that this Aegon kid might actually be a Blackfire, a descendant of Daemon. So it's very interesting that in a reading by George Martin of a draft version of a chapter from Dance, Illyrio mentions a gift for young Griff, and a sword, and things Griff must know. Fans speculate that Illyrio may have Blackfire, the fabled blade of Aegon, and will give it to Griff to grant him political legitimacy as a king. This is very speculative, but it could make a lot of sense. It'd solve the mystery of what happened to Blackfire, and would tie present plots to the past in a really cool way. So yeah, Blackfire is important, and Lady Forlorn is also a thing. After the duel at the Redgrass Field, the sword returned to House Corbray, and a hundred years later, Lynn Corbray used it in Robert's Rebellion, killing Prince Lewin Martell of the Kingsguard. Lynn is now involved in the plots in the Vale, working with Littlefinger, but it's not clear if he can be trusted. Lynn's a dangerous man, violent, and possibly a pedophile, depending on how you interpret this line about boys. But yeah, that's what's happening with Lady Forlorn now. Historically, there was also a sword called Lady Forlorn used in the Wars of the Andals in the Vale, but apparently that may have been a different Lady Forlorn. People keep naming swords after famous older swords, which can confuse things, but anyway. Another important Targaryen sword is called Dark Sister. While Aegon the Conqueror had Blackfire, his sister Queen Visenya had Dark Sister, a slender blade designed for a female warrior. Visenya used the sword during Aegon's conquest, when she wasn't roasting people with her dragon. Many years later, Dark Sister went to Daemon Targaryen, the rogue prince, who used the sword during the Dance of the Dragons, the big Targaryen civil war. During a mid-air dragon battle with his nephew Aemond One-Eye, 
Daemon leapt from his dragon onto Amon's dragon and drove Dark Sister through Amon's one good eye before both men and their dragons fell from the sky and died. This is why we need a Game of Thrones prequel movie, guys. After Daemon, Dark Sister went to Aemon Targaryen, the famous Dragon Knight, said to be one of the greatest and noblest knights that ever lived. He's also the namesake of Maester Aemon Targaryen. After the Dragon Knight, Dark Sister went to a man called Brynden Rivers, or Blood Raven. Blood Raven really needs his own video, but basically, he was a king's bastard, a spy master, sorcerer, hand of the king. He killed Daemon Blackfire at the Redgrass Field, had a relationship with Shiera Seastar, who might possibly be Quaith. Then Blood Raven joined the Night's Watch, became Lord Commander, went north, and finally became a tree wizard man, the guy who's known in the show as the Three Eyed Raven. But the question here is what happened to the sword Dark Sister? Did Blood Raven bring it with him to the Night's Watch, like Jill Mormont did? And if he did, is the sword now in the cave where Blood Raven trains Bran? If so, it seems possible that Bran's friend Mira might take up the sword. It is designed for a woman's hand, after all. In fact, some people think that in the show, she already has Dark Sister. She does grab a sword from the cave in Season 6. Another possibility is for Dark Sister to go to Arya. Needle is cool and all, but surely a ninja assassin like Arya should have a storied Valyrian sword like Dark Sister. And Arya is herself kind of a Dark Sister. This is all wild speculation, but given the history and importance of Dark Sister, it seems likely that the sword will reappear in the story. Another lost Valyrian sword is Brightroar. House Lannister bought Brightroar for a huge amount of gold before the doom of Valyria, but a hundred years later, after Valyria was destroyed, King Tommen Lannister went on an expedition to plunder its ruins. He took Brightroar with him and never returned. House Lannister lost one of its most valuable treasures, which always frustrated Tywin when he led House Lannister. So at one point, Tywin's younger brother Garion went on a quest to find Brightroar, but he never returned either. Go watch the Garion video. But in the end, Tywin got his Valyrian sword in the form of ice, which he made into Oathkeeper and Widow's Whale. In the books, by the way, these swords are coloured red. Tywin has the metal sort of dyed to a rippling Lannister crimson colour, because Tywin's all about that House Pride family legacy stuff. Anyway, the next couple of swords are owned by Ironborn. There's Red Rain and Nightfall. Red Rain is a Valyrian sword held by Dunstan Drum, the Lord of Old Wick. He whips it out at the King's Moot and recounts how his ancestor, Hilmar Drum the Cunning, famously took Red Rain from some knight, armed only with his wits and a cudgel. And there's a theory that the knight who Drum took Red Rain from might have been from House Rain, a family in the Westerlands who Tywin Lannister wiped out. The Rains have a red lion for their sigil, and their name is Rain, so Red Rain is a fitting name in more ways than one. And the Westerlands have historically been raided by Ironborn, so it makes a lot of sense for the Drums to have taken Red Rain from the Rains. In Book 4, Drum is on raids with Red Rain in the Reach. Nightfall is a Valyrian sword held by the knight Sir Harris Harlor. Harris supports Asher, or Yara Greyjoy at the Kingsmoot, though Euron later kind of steals him from her by making Harris a lord. The sword Nightfall was historically wielded by the infamous Ironborn raider Dalton Greyjoy, called the Red Kraken for all the blood he shed. It's said Dalton loved three things, the sea, women, and his Valyrian sword Nightfall. It's not clear how Red Rain and Nightfall will tie into the broader story of Thrones, but some speculate that King Euron might take these swords from their owners. In the books, Euron has a set of armour made of Valyrian steel. He might want to complement that with a Valyrian sword or two. And Nightfall is a pretty appropriate name for someone who is low-key trying to cause a Lovecraftian blood magic apocalypse type situation, which he is in the books. We'll have to explain that in another video, but basically, Euron is scary. Uh, another Valyrian blade that's had a big impact on the story is not another sword, but a knife. In Book and Season 1, an assassin tries to kill Bran Stark with a knife of Valyrian steel. Catelyn takes the blade to King's Landing, and Littlefinger tells her the knife is Tyrion's. So Catelyn, thinking the dwarf tried to kill her son, arrests Tyrion, which kicks off the War of the Five Kings. Thing is, the real culprit behind the cat's paw is Joffrey, 
Littlefinger lied about the knife in a deliberate attempt to cause war. After betraying Ned Stark and profiting off the downfall of his family, Littlefinger carries the Valyrian knife in later books, shamelessly wearing a symbol of his lies and betrayal. Now, in the books, Sansa is in the Vale with Littlefinger and the knife. Some people speculate that Sansa will use the knife to kill him, destroying Littlefinger with the same blade he used to destroy her family. There'd be a great poetry to that, though things will probably go differently in the show. There are a few more Valyrian swords that were used in the Dance of the Dragons, the Targaryen Civil War from a hundred years ago. Lamentation is a sword carried by a guy called Willem Royce. He got caught up in the storming of the Dragon Pit, when a rioting mob of common folk killed some chained up dragons. In all the violence and the chaos, Willem Royce and his sword were lost. There was also bold John Roxton and Ormond Hightower, who bore the swords Orphan Maker and Vigilance. Roxton was killed, and we haven't heard from his family since, but the High Towers are still around, so they might have vigilance at Old Town, where Euron may be closing in. There are a few more Valyrian blades that are only briefly mentioned in the text. Some soldier from Lys had a Valyrian sword called Truth, the Keltigars of Claw Isle are said to have a Valyrian steel axe, and a guy called Kago has a Valyrian steel arak, one of those curvy Dothraki scythe things, which is apparently pretty rare in Valyrian steel. Kago is a captain of the Windblown Mercenaries, so he'll be involved in the story ahead in Slaver's Bay. Finally, there are a bunch of Valyrian daggers among the treasure Euron presents at the King's Moot. It's a little weird the way these are just offhandedly mentioned, as though a bunch of Valyrian blades is like no big deal. Maybe Valyrian daggers are more common than the swords are, but you'd think that if so, someone like Tywin could just buy a bunch of Valyrian daggers and reforge them into the sword Tywin desperately wanted for so long. So the true value and rarity of Valyrian steel is not very clear. But regardless, this is every Valyrian blade mentioned in all of Game of Thrones. Longclaw and Heartsbane, Ice, Oathkeeper and Widow's Wail, Blackfire, Dark Sister, Lady Forlorn, Brightroar, Red Rain and Nightfall, the Swords of the Dance, Littlefinger's Dagger, and this other miscellaneous stuff too. There are more swords out there, of course, about a hundred and eighty more apparently, and Westeros might need them all to win the war against the Walkers. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about the histories and backstories of thrones, you might like to read The World of Ice and Fire, George Martin's world book, which is all about this sort of stuff. There's a link to buy it below, which supports this channel at no extra cost to you. Some of this art is from The World of Ice and Fire, while other pieces are by Amok and Catherine. Check out the description for details. Thanks to the translators for translating captions, and thanks also to the patrons for making Alt Shift X possible, including James Beagles, Yelda Actuna, Avery Calvert, Rufus T. Firefly, Shuiko Shining Force 2, and Hodor Targaryen. Cheers.